Welcome, everyone. Glad you are here. Um, I have the honor of speaking to Joseph Butler today, truly a remarkable figure of the 18th century. Uh, he had a great deal to offer the church, although he did not begin life as an Anglican. He was actually an underground Presbyterian uh, raised in a family of extreme Protestants. He was uh, going to go to a non-conforming uh, uh, seminary and become a Presbyterian minister, but then started to engage in correspondence with prominent Anglicans of the day. Turned out he really did like it left the uh, Protestant seminary uh, and joined the mainstream, went to Oxford and uh, entered into ordained ministry. Interesting facets of his journey. He became one of the most prominent and preeminent moral and systematic theologians of his day. He also was the chaplain to the wife of Charles II and also, what was it again? The something of the closet? The clerk of the closet. The clerk of the closet to the king, which we were joking about. It's not the uh, closet where the clothes are kept and it's not the water closet, but it instead it is the person who hangs out with the king in the morning as he does his ablutions and sort of serves as the first advisor of the day, if you will. So truly an intimate of the royal household, but also a proponent uh, in his day of the, uh, the theological concepts that confronted some of the natural philosophies uh, proposed by Hobbes, uh, Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, and the rest, who were arguing for a more secularist view, a more, uh, more secular humanistic view of, of the world. One of the challenges of that, as Hobbes uh, held out, that life is life and humanity are both nasty, brutish, and short, and we should go for all we can get. It's not a rugged individualism that we're talking about or a rugged exceptionalism in the case of John Locke, but rather something deeper and more profound where we are connected to each other as the body of Christ. And there is a mutual accountability that we share and a responsibility we share uh, as members of the wider church. So Joseph Butler, truly one of the remarkable figures of the day, a renowned moral theologian, a renowned systematic theologian, and one who took on the big issues of the day. There is a legend after he was uh, named Bishop of can't remember what his first episcopacy was, but he was translated to Durham as an archbishop of the country, that he was offered the archbishopric of Canterbury, but turned it down. That turns out to be rather apocryphal, but just goes to show the eminence of the core of his of his sense of connection to both the crown, to the house of bishops and to the house of lords. So a great deal to offer to us in the church um, and one of those Carolinian fathers of the day who had a great deal to offer um, in a, when Catholicism, Anglicanism, and Protestantism were trying to figure out their path in life. He was one of the bridges in that journey. Anything I missed, Laura? Nope. I, I was wondering, um, there was something about human nature. I think it was Hobbes or Locke who thought we were just vile, vile creatures and out for ourselves. That's Hobbes. And that's Hobbes. And um, Joseph Butler said, at our core, we are out to make our, uh, take care of ourselves. And then the second thing is we are looking to take care of others, that there is yeah. uh, the greater community, you know, care for the greater community second. Yeah, he was sort of the Ted Lasso of his day. I, I I wouldn't have said it like that, but it, it fits. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking for something to bridge the gap. All right, here we go. It's time for morning prayer. Laura, I'll throw to you and I will be reading today. Okay, very good. Uh, before we get started, as always, we are uh, inviting your prayer intercessions, your prayer thanksgivings. If you have any you'd like us to uh, share, Please add them to the comment box live on Facebook. We will read them at the uh, point of the office following the prayer attributed to St. Francis. If you are watching later on Facebook or later on YouTube, again, please share your comments and we will read them and, and uh, share your intercessions and thanksgivings at our next office tonight at five o'clock evening prayer. So we have morning prayer. God is spirit and those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me for the antiphon and invitatory. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Our psalm this morning is 83. I will lead with the odd verses. Please respond with the even. O oh God, do not keep silence. Do not hold your peace or be still, O oh God. Even now your enemies are in tumult. Those who hate you have raised their heads. They lay crafty plans against your people. They consult together against those you protect. They say, come, let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. They conspire with one accord. Against you, they make a covenant. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites. Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, Philistia, with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also has joined them. They are the strong arm of the children of Lot. Do to them as you did to Midian, as to Caesarea and Jabin at the Wadi Kishon. Who were destroyed at Endor, who became dung for the ground. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, and all their princes like Zeba and Zalmona who said, let us take the pastors of God for our own possession. Oh, my God, make them like whirling dust, like chaff before the wind. As fire consumes the forest, as the flame sets the mountains ablaze. So pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your hurricane. Fill their faces with shame so that they may seek your name, O Lord. Let them be put to shame and dismayed forever. Let them perish in disgrace. Let them know that you are alone, whose name is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. While they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had indeed married a Cushite woman. And they said, Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more so than anyone else on the face of the earth. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tent of meeting. So the three of them came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. And he said, Hear my words. When there are prophets among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. Not so with my servant Moses. 
He is entrusted with all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly, not in riddles, and he beholds the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. When the cloud went away from over the tent, Miriam had become leprous, as white as snow. And Aaron turned towards Miriam and saw that she was leprous. Then Aaron said to Moses, O my Lord, do not punish us for a sin that we have so foolishly committed. Do not let her be like one stillborn, whose flesh is half consumed when it comes out of its mother's womb. And Moses cried to the Lord, O God, please heal her. But the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, would she not bear her shame for seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp for seven days, and after that she may be brought in again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days, and the people did not set out on the march until Miriam had been brought in again. After that, the people set out from Hazaroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle, a song of wisdom, together. Wisdom, freed from a nation of oppressors, a holy people, and a blameless race. She entered the soul of a servant of the Lord, withstood dread rulers with wonders and signs. To the saints, she gave the reward of their labors and led them by a marvelous way. She was their shelter by day and a blaze of stars by night. She brought them across the Red Sea. She led them through mighty waters. But their enemies she swallowed in the waves and spewed them out from the depths of the abyss. And then, Lord, the righteous sang hymns to your name and praised with one voice your protecting hand. For wisdom opened the mouths of the mute and gave speech to the tongues of a newborn people. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. All who have sinned apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous in God's sight, but the doers of the law who will be justified. When Gentiles who do not possess the law do instinctively what the law requires, these, though not having the law, are a law to themselves. They show that what the law requires is written on their hearts to which their own conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts will accuse or perhaps excuse them on the day when, according to my gospel, God, through Jesus Christ, will judge the secret thoughts of all. But if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast of your relation to God and know his will and determine what is best because you are instructed in the law, and if you are sure that you are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then that teach others, will you not teach yourself? While you preach against stealing, do you steal? You that forbid adultery, do you commit adultery? You that abhor idols, do you rob temples? You that boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? For as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, a song of true motherhood, together. God chose to be our mother in all things, and so made the foundation of his work most humbly and most pure in the virgin's womb. God, the perfect wisdom of all, arrayed himself in this humble place. Christ came in our poor flesh to share a mother's care. Our mothers bear us for pain and for death. Our true mother, Jesus, bears us for joy and endless life. Christ carried us within him in love and travail until the full time of his passion. And when all was completed and he had carried us so for joy, still all this could not satisfy the power of his wonderful love. All that we owe is redeemed in truly loving God, for the love of Christ works in us. Christ is the one whom we love. The Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, who raises up scholars for your church in every generation, we praise you for the wisdom and insight granted to your bishop and theologian, Joseph Butler, and pray that your church may never be destitute of such gifts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon where there is discord, union, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your uh intercessions and thanksgivings pray for brooke and chase who are to be married today for a blessing upon their union as they weave their lives together pray for william who is being laid to rest today and for barbara and her family as they mourn his passing We pray for all those who are marginalized, who are victims of injustice and live in a world of fear and discord. We pray for their safety and their welcoming. And we pray that we all look in our hearts to see how we can amend our own ways to be more welcoming to the world around us. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Madaguri, Madaguri, the Church of Nigeria. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverends Stephen Carroll and Austin Murray. 
Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, that concludes morning prayer and gets us a great start to our day. We have uh, much going on here in Spotswood, Alice's Cup, uh, Food Pantry. We have the shop at St. Peter's open this after, uh, this morning, this afternoon. And this we evening. Have, and this evening. I forgot that. Thursday evening. I never know what day it is. Um, with that, there's also meetings and pastoral calls and all kinds of and a wedding. All kinds and a wedding. And a wedding. See, you know, just we're busy here and and thrilled to work and witness and service to Jesus. Uh, check out our our uh, website, uh, webpage, stpeterspotswood.org. That will tell you way better than I can what we do here. Um, please join us Sunday morning. We are back at summer summer service hours, one service, nine o'clock inside the church, live on Facebook and later uploaded to YouTube. Join us in person, join us online. You are most welcome. And we look forward to being together again uh, Monday morning as we restart the daily offices for the week and tonight at five. My goodness. So tonight at five and then all that other good stuff. Don't forget there's like, a writer's blog and vlog is coming out as yeah. well. Don't listen to me. <laughs> Just stay tuned. If you, if you follow us on uh, Facebook, you will know when these things pop up immediately. If you like and subscribe and ring the bells on no, uh, for notifications on YouTube, you will also be notified immediately. So you don't have to count on me to remember to tell you. With that, have a blessed day, and we will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care and God bless.